Gabriel, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I have a surprise guest who's never been on my show before, ever, at all. Never. Not at all my gaming bestie. Mm -mm, no, not nope. happened. David Thompson, you? you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is Jason Perez from Shelf Stories. Hopefully you know him already, and if you don't, you should. How you doing, Jason? Yo, my peoples, what's up? We're here. Uh, had to fire this up. Uh, this is also running on Shelf Stories. So this is a combined Beyond Solitaire and Shelf Stories production. Uh, we had to do it. There's so much going on uh, in our personal lives, in our gaming lives, and with things that we really care about. So there's lots of stuff we care about. You know, we care about history. We care about representation. We care about culture. Uh, you know, all these things that we talk about. But when it comes to uh, gender relations, when it comes to uh, how we are together, uh, romantic relationships and, you know, sexuality, uh, we have a lot of work to do. I'll be, be perfectly honest. Oh. We've so, <laughs> <laughs> so like many different streams have come together. This isn't just like us, you know, jumping on the latest flame of the week. I mean, there's so much coming together. So we had to fire up. And we're going to run through it. Right. And I'm going to give Liz the floor because Liz actually has a lot a lot to say. So, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I uh, will just lead off there. So Liz, uh, go ahead and talk about what you wanted to, uh, what inspired you to kind of reach out and say, okay, we got to do this together. Well, okay. So I want to start off by saying, this is a topic that I have deliberately not spoken about before. It's a topic I don't necessarily like to- Three seasons discuss. of Beyond Solitaire. We, this is the first time we've talked about sexism and that, and that on that level. Yes. So I typically do not like to- I guess front my femininity very much like yes I'm a woman but I feel like that's not the first thing I want people to see about me right. and it's not the main thing I want to talk about usually uh but I feel like it's important because we've had so many incidents in the board game community recently that I think it's just responsible to mm -hmm. get out there and say something and not just sit and wait for it to blow over right so let's actually let's start with uh one of the things that I've done videos about uh, and yeah. which is one of the reasons we, we got into it together. Uh, and we're going to hit a couple of things. You know, we're going to hit Broken Token and the uh, harassment there. You know, there's going to be a lot of different things that we're going to glance on. So leave me. And we have some stuff in personal life. We'll get to that. Uh, but let's start with um, the Trudvang Legends thing. And we're not doing oh, this yeah. just to like, um, to hammer the point. The, the, the picture has been changed. There was a nude in Trudvang Legends. It's been changed. The, the, you know, the discussion that's been had, we're blowing over, moving on. It's just like, um, when I showed the picture to Liz or when she saw the video, it was Liz just like, Ugh, again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, so I get a lot of comments. It's like um, along the lines of like, okay, let's not make mountains out of molehills, right? Yes. You know, it's one picture. It was a nude. It was in Trudvang Ledger's rule book. And it was like the, the, kick, the Kickstarter campaign promised kind of one thing. And then another thing came out, right? So we yeah. don't have a problem with nudes. We do not have a problem with nudes. We're not prudes here. We like our male right. and female bodies just so, fine. Actually, but, I'm going to publicly walk something back here, which is that I once wrote a blog post that I would never play Kingdom Death Monster because I was so grossed out by the pinups. Hmm. I have not played it yet because I'm too lazy to put together the minis, but I do have it. I do intend to play it because I thought about it and I was like, well, I'm willing to try for the experience of this game, even if right. I'm not totally sure how I feel about how sexuality is presented in this game at this time. So yeah, this is not, least, right. I see something that's like an adult image and get upset because that's actually not really where I'm at. At the very least, KDM kind of announced what it was and yep. it made itself a boutique product for a niche audience. It exactly. didn't just like put itself out into the world or anything. So, right. you know, I, whatever feelings we have about how KDM does it, at least they kind of respected the fact that they knew what they were. The, the yes. Treadbang Legends thing, it was a little bit fuzzier because there wasn't that much lead time. I think they may assume that people were more familiar with the original IP than they maybe were. Yes. So, you know, a lot of things happen. So it's not about just, we don't like nudity. Please, we don't want to yeah. hear that comment. It is about how you do it. It's about agree. how you do it. It's about how it is about, it's about the fact that it took us by surprise and some other aspects of just, you know, I mean, you. Um, so I, I set that up, uh, but and you had a visceral reaction. I remember you shared that with me on private message. I did. So maybe talk about a little bit about that, that response, that, that emotional response when you first saw it. 
Yeah, I guess when I saw it, you know, it's not like, oh, trauma. I had to go cry for an hour. It ruined my day to see a little fairy boob, like whatever. But, you know, at the same time, I think I think a lot of women feel this way, right? When you see yet another kind of gratuitously naked woman, you just feel tired because that image is really not for you. And you know, like this was especially one that I didn't like very much because it looked like this fairy had been going to the Brazilian waxer. <laughs> like, you know, it was just kind of weird. Like there's something, her pose was like a weird mix between childlike and pinuppy because of the way that she was bent over. Right. But she also had kind of like a childlike face and like, it was just odd. Like, I mean, and you know, there's nothing, there's nothing inherently wrong with the image depending on context, right? But like, when you open up something like Trinvang Legends and you see mostly these like ripped barbarian guys ready to tear each other to pieces and then it's like ooh naked fairy like wait what why is this in here what 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 what? Like, <laughs> what and the thing is it's not in there for any reason other than like to add some spice to the rule book but who are we spicing it for mm-hmm. this is like this is like my version of raisins in the potato salad you know what i'm saying like <laughs> you know like i don't i don't need this ingredient added to my board games because that's really not what I bought them for. It feels gratuitous. And I also know that when you put an image like that in, you are explicitly saying my target audience, the people I'm expecting to be communicating with in this rule book are bros who like a little surprise tip. Mm -hmm. Frankly, this isn't the dice tower. I'm just gonna (laughs) (laughs) don't worry about that here. We're good trouble over here. So (laughs) I'll put an explicit language thing on there. So like me, and again, I showed the image. It's not, you know, that's not something that would appear in the dice tower as as an example. Uh, So like the to the idea of like a mountain out of a molehill. Well, for guys, it is a molehill because they don't have the context. That they, you know, they that's a surprise and it's a delightful surprise. Like, ooh, okay, and that's something Uh, for a woman. And yeah. I'm learning this more and more. Again, this is, you know, uh, I this is something as a marriage therapist, learning about, you know, being a, a good therapist to women. You know, I have to be entered into that in, empathic space, being a friend to Liz, being a friend to the, the different women in the board gaming industry more every day, which is great. Uh, but wondering what they're doing here because this keeps happening. It's so like, it's the context, you know? Yes. It, you know, the, for a woman, this context is a mountain. It is a little tip of a, very large gratuitous mountain yes. and so nice. like i, mean, I don't want to spend too much time on this but i know people are going to say it is european lore you know let this is how we do it in europe um you know you americans are putting in your sensibilities yeah. how would you respond to that uh, criticism uh, i would say okay so partially to an extent i can see that i remember when i was in berlin i went to the goethe institute to study german for a couple months and like i stayed with a host mom and I was shocked. We went to the lake one time and she was like, I don't want to go for a swim. And she just ripped all her clothes off and jumped in the lake. So I have a cross. We were out there with her boyfriend, her dog. We just walked around to the other side of the lake and met her and like out she came out of the lake, like, like a Arthurian legend. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It wasn't a big deal to me. And I'm also somebody who has been to um, Middle Eastern bathhouses. So like I've had more than one Turkish bath. You basically just go hang out with a bunch of other women. You're all wearing bikini bottoms and nothing else. And you lie around and sweat. And then somebody comes and scrubs all your dead skin off. Like they rub you down like a horse. You come out cleaner than you've ever been in your life. Like, you know, I'm not particularly shocked by nudity in context where I don't feel like it's sexualized so i guess the question is why did i feel like that picture was sexualized when other images of naked women do not come across to me that way i think that that's really the core here and i think that there were a lot of false equivalencies going on in discussions of this image right because it was like well there's no you know we had we saw chest you know men with bare chests and you know we saw men's nipples and this is just a woman's nipple okay I drove out of my parking lot school yesterday and saw a bunch of cross country runner boys running around wearing little short shorts. And you know what? There was nothing inappropriate about that because they were just athletes working out. If it had been a group of girls, it would have been different. It's always different. You can't pretend it's not different. Um, You know, there's two rules, people. There's two rules. Yeah, there's, there's absolutely two rules. You know, I, I work as a teacher, right? So I think about this a lot. You know, we read it our dress code this year. You know, what's been in dress code? Um, you know, it's boobs, belly, butt. That's what's banned. 
those top two on the list are about girls. I mean, it's just, it's just what our culture is right now. And I think that pretending that we're all so cool with sex and the human body that it's just not a big deal anymore and we all need to grow up is belied by the fact that that is just the case. Um, you know, we can't pretend that we're all, you know, civilized here we don't worry about these things da, 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 da. but then you know if you see a topless picture of a woman on somebody's phone maybe that got shared around maybe that you know but ain't, ain't nobody doing that with topless well i mean you know there are definitely women who like to look at shirtless men like that's not a question right but i also feel like the power dynamics are different because they're, they're hugely different yeah hugely i, I mean like I, <laughs> my, my wife called it the lawsuit test and I love yeah. this. Like if I, if someone, if my boss sees my chest, that doesn't trigger a lawsuit. No. If her boss sees her chest, lawsuit. Oh yeah. Right. So like, oh, yeah. you know, oh, a male's chest and a female's chest, the woman's nipples and a male's nipple. Oh, you will oh, yeah. be, I will sue your, I will beat your ass up if you see my wife her chest <laughs> if you see my chest i got no problem if, if your girlfriend sees my chest that's a style expectation you know we could talk about whether that's an equivalent or not but we don't but we have to live in the real world here and if you see my wife's chest for some odd reason which would never ever happen let's let's put it that way yeah. but like if in the hypothetical world i'm beating your ass up or or, or suing you or both yeah the, the so if uh, if it's if it's representation does it trigger a lawsuit yes you know, that's the, in terms yeah. of like actual people, in terms of images on a page, much different art, all kind of stuff. So like yeah. getting back to the uh, issue of like, you know, what, what is, you know, again, I've also been uh, camping with Europeans. They don't care. They'll, they'll just like rip it off. And I've seen, yeah. I've seen junk. I've seen whatever. And but so it's if like, that's true, then how come you, I mean, I thought that your point about how did the orc man manage to find a belt? <laughs> You know, I mean, that's kind of true. You know what I mean? Like the fairies out living in the woods, we can't right. pretend that it's not because it's because the orcs fight and they have to protect the most sensitive part of their body. No, that fairy's running around across like in the world of bugs and thorns and right. like, come on, come on. Found the come Brazilian on. waxer in the middle of the fey wild. Yes. And it made their legs look silky smooth. Uh, exactly. It's about the It's about the pose. It's about the staging. Oh, yeah. It's about the, um, you know, the, just the overall kind of vibe that what you're trying to excite the emotion that you're excited. Every piece of art excites an emotion. So it's like, okay, yeah. if I'm drawing an orc, I'm, I'm trying uh, with a belt on, I'm trying yeah. to evoke, you know, dominance. I'm trying to evoke, you know, adventure and all kind of stuff. If I'm drawing a fairy. I'm trying to, I mean, titillate. Yeah, so so there's a, there was an intentionality in the staging of the thing. I agree. So like back to the lawsuit thing though. So this is actually hitting me on a personal level today. So I'm not going to name the school. But a school in my area is having a scandal right now because allegedly, and we will never know, and you know what? It's not our business. It's not our business. Allegedly, a female teacher cheated on her husband, and he decided to take revenge on her by posting a dirty video of her, a different one, in every single one of her Google Classroom classes for students and parents to see. And those videos are everywhere. Like, if you search this high school, you know, I did my due diligence and reported a few of them today. Because I felt like I owed that to a fellow teacher, regardless of what she was up to in her personal life. It didn't involve students, and it had no business being shared by students, laughed at by students. But let's think about, when we think about revenge fantasies, right? Who is revenge porn about? It's about women. That's because the ultimate thing you can do to hurt a woman is to show her in a position of that kind of vulnerability. And that is not true in the same way for a man. So like, if I was that teacher, I could never show my face at work again, even if I wasn't going to be punished officially, even if, you know, like, you know, she was violated in such a horrible way, even if she did cheat on her husband, so what, what he did was worse. And I can see why he's her ex now, regardless, because wow. And I don't know, it just really hits me hard because I already feel like I don't have enough control over my body right now, given that I am in rooms of large groups of people during COVID with the mask mandate that we try to enforce, like, I don't know, like I'm already feeling a bit violated in like non-sexual ways. And I just can't even imagine what it's like to be this woman. And the thing is when we imagine hurting a woman, that's one of the ways that we decide to do it as a culture. Mm -hmm. And that says a lot. And I don't think that we can have these conversations about art 
outside of that context because that's where we live. Mm -hmm. And even if the game is, you know, kind of European based, guess who bought it? A bunch of Americans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't expect something that's made in your cultural context to make sense in another cultural context. That's why American movies are shocking if you go over to the Middle East and talk to somebody about it. Like, just because it's made in one culture doesn't mean that another culture has to receive it in the same spirit. And we don't. Right. There are two rules. And that, like, if there's one thing that's kind of trailing through, I know good trouble goes through a lot of places. Like we go to gender and culture and, you know, sometimes even economics and, you know, rich poor and everything. I think there's one, there's a, there's a stream that flows through all this stuff is that there are two sets of rules. A, a man can recover from that. As a matter of fact, yeah. there's going to be a section of men who, if they see pictures of, you know, them, you know, X-rated with a woman, there's going to be a, a certain number of men, enough of men, who are rooting for that. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the yeah. Saturday Night Live stuff with, again, the teacher, right? It was like, they're joking about that boy who, you know, slept with an adult. It's abusive. His mother's upset about it. And everybody else is like, oh, my man. Yeah, and like, right, right. <laughs> right. That would, that would never happen. That would never happen to any appreciable degree. It would be, it's so overwhelming what, Liz, what you talked about. And that really hit me, actually. I never really yeah. thought of it quite that way. Of like, you know, can you show your face at work again? No, you can't. I would go live in a hole and die. Like, I no. <laughs> you would go live in a hole, then die, then get another job. Yeah, of course. In that yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, emotionally, I would need way more therapy than I currently receive to process something that traumatic. Right. Like, wow, you know? And... Yeah, I'm actually really careful about my online image because I know that a student of mine can find anything that I make anytime. So I'm willing to like be myself to a very large degree online because I'm not ashamed of myself. But there are parts of my life that I consider very private that would really pain me to have as public business. So, you know, I mean, sharding out in terms of like the revenge porn, revenge porn is awful. Yeah. It is awful, point blank. And it is but one of so many behaviors in which men engage that not only do certain, some men engage it, you know, I think there might be a, a tendency of like, okay, well, that's terrible. I'm going to, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't agree with that, but then it's, there's always, you know, levels to it. So like there's, is this is the behavior, but then there's like a larger permission structure that minimizes. Yes. Yeah. And like, we're not saying, I think, I think we need to clarify because somebody will put, we'll, we'll try this. Like, we're not saying that a surprise hit in Treadbang Legends is equivalent to revenge porn because it's right. not, but it's all part of the same ecosystem. Right, like, right. It's, it's the same thing as, you know, men not noticing when another man is a creep. Um, and for me, it's also like, okay, so I think it's a good moment to talk about why I don't like to talk a whole lot about being a woman on the internet. Mm -hmm. So I have short hair, I'm loud. People just kind of forget my gender a lot of the time. And like, I'm more than happy for that to happen. And I had no idea. Why, I was like, it was like months before I figured out, oh, wait. Right? No, oh, wait. her name is Elizabeth. But, what happened? But, but the thing is, right? Like, I move in a space where I don't think about myself in terms of my body very much. I think a lot about I, I want to be judged and appreciated and criticized if that's going to happen, right? In terms of the things that I do and in terms of the things that I create and not in terms of the body that I was born into. And I feel like I think what makes me so tired about seeing gratuitous female nudity is that it's a reminder that no matter what I do, someone will always reduce me to that whether I know it or not. And I think that like, look at Trudving Legends, right? Even if you're looking at half naked men, they're doing something, right? They're getting ready to fight, they're posturing, they're taking actions in their world. And then it's like, ooh, pass a fairy. You know what I mean? And mm, that interesting. bothers me. Like, I don't like being reminded, right? That there will always be people who reduce women to ornamentation. And yeah, like, it's just something that I prefer not to remember. And I don't like to think about people viewing me that way. Um, this is especially true at work because God, no. Uh, but it's also true in my, my board game life, right? Where, you know, I make a podcast that I'm proud of on an intellectual level. Like this podcast is my pride and joy because I feel like I'm making something cool. 
um, you know, when I review a game, I want people to respect my review because they respect me as player and as somebody who knows what I'm talking about. When I talk about history, I want to be treated as somebody who is, in fact, a trained expert on how to do history and comment on it. And bringing my body into it is really not on. Mm-hmm. And somebody always will. Right. Whether I can see it or not, whether they say it or not, those little gratuitous naked women a reminder that for some people that's what you are or could be and i actually think this leads into the broken token yeah. issue sure okay uh and just to emphasize the point uh and this is something that i that kind of my my, my hobby horse because i'm interested in men right i want to improve men's behavior I actually you know thinking about this like you know in terms of like you know feminist right that 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 right. self-identification i almost don't want that self-identification like i want y'all to have it this is your thing, like, you know, or like people who are in that thing, like my, my interest is in improving the behavior of men and improving men overall. Like I want us to be better men, better fathers, better husbands, better, you know, contributors in society. And like, of course, I'm gonna, obviously so much of what I believe in lines up with that project, but like, yeah. I want people to be really, uh, to really try to understand where I'm coming from with this. So I'm thinking about men in terms of that behavior that Liz is talking about. I'm also thinking about men who excuse it. And I'm talking about men who yeah. minimize it. It's like, oh, it's not that big a deal. Don't make a, you know, don't be whatever. It's one picture, leave it alone or whatever. It's, you know, the, that was a terrible relationship and the guy might've been hurt or, you know, all these different things. And then, you know, talking about the broken token thing, which is where it resonated with me, there was what happened. And then there was like the response is like, oh, well, you know, we don't, we can't believe her. Da-da-da-da. So we'll get to that. Um, yeah. So um, go, you, you, do you want to kind of run through what happened or? Yeah. So, I mean, I think we all read the story that dropped, but basically, um, there's a female employee of the broken token. What is her name? Ashley Taylor. Ashley Taylor. There we go. Um, there's so many people now who are commenting and having right. issues that they're finally being brave enough to speak about. So Ashley was working for the broken token and she was one of its earliest employees. And she ended up in a situation where she was essentially trapped in her situation by the CEO. Um, he had, I wouldn't say they're romantic cause they're really not, um, sexual inclinations towards her uh he might have thought that he wanted a relationship with her but um she was not interested but he basically put her in a position where she could quit her job and maybe have to leave the industry or she could humor him and so she ended up trapped in an emotionally abusive relationship for several years and i think that a lot of people ask like well why didn't you quit and there's so many reasons why Right. women don't run and why they don't quit jobs. I think part of it is that you feel so attached to a project that you feel like you don't want to leave it just because of this thing that you can minimize in your head. I think we all convince ourselves that something's not a big deal too. It's, it's almost worse when somebody's like, well, this wasn't a big deal. Why are you making such a big deal out of this? Because by telling yourself it wasn't a big deal, you left yourself in a situation where you got in too deep and it was hard to get out because our whole society would have encouraged you to just suck it up and get through it and then maybe try to find another job. And the power differential is incredibly uh, there, not just because he's a CEO of Rogue Token, but he has a lot of relationships in yeah. the industry. You know, yeah. leave, you know, let job go find someone else. Well, you're fearing that this person not only costs you your job, they're right. powerful enough in the industry to make your name mud. And if you don't think right. that happens, then you're not paying attention. But oh, absolutely. You know, there are people who use their power for to make make someone's name mud in the industry, put them, uh, you know, say this person's a problem. This person is oversensitive. They're going to cause you trouble when you when you hire them. You know, yep. the, the, these people talk. They're at cons and whatever. So it's like it's not, it's not just about the one job. Again, ecosystem thinking, people. If you're not thinking the ecosystem, then we're not having a conversation. If right. you're just thinking in terms of like the individual behavior, then we can't get anywhere because you can't laser focus on one interaction. You got to right. think ecosystem. And if you're having public trouble with that, then ask us and let us know because we have to live in this world yes. as a woman and as a POC, we have to live in this world. So, so again, so don't think of an individual, think of the ecosystem. So like this person yeah. fell trapped, not just because of the one interaction, the whole thing was wired against her financially, emotionally, yes. uh, professionally. So there she was. And there was a relationship. He was married. He had a relationship yeah. with her. And he, so, you know, and so there was a lot of a lot of back and forth going on. Eventually she got out and, you know, she you could read the whole thing. Uh, I'll link. Uh, I did a video where I commented it briefly, but I'll link it again in this yeah. in this video, too. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll get that on Beyond Solitaire, the show notes. Uh, you know, so we'll get that. We'll get that blog. Read for yourself. So uh, Greg Spence, who is the broken token CEO, puts up a uh, defense 
at the very beginning from Broken Token, which by the way, why are you putting it on your letterhead? You know, this is not, <laughs> this is a individual yeah. thing with romantic relationships. Why, why are you making it seem like a company press release if it's the company's talking, right? I know you're CEO, but that's the problem. Right? You, right, you tried. You leveraged your position as an individual person to get this person, but then you come back to this. The boundaries are too blurry, right? So that's the first problem. Second problem, just complete denial. I didn't do anything wrong. In in allows that there was a consensual relationship with yes. Ashley, but complete denial. That no, this didn't happen the way it did. I'm a good person. I love my wife. Blah 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 blah. Right. A month passes, and then another statement comes out. Where it's like, you know, I've I, I see that a lot of people have problems with the things. I'm sorry that Miss Taylor got hurt. Uh, we, uh, you know, we I, no, none of the stuff happened that she says happened in terms of the power and the threatening, but we had an inappropriate relationship, and I'm going to make changes. And that, beca- I mean, I'm, I'm summarizing a lot yeah. of things, but I mean, that's kind of the that's, that comes down to it. I like, you know, it was inappropriate. I had consent, so I didn't do anything wrong, but I was inappropriate to the situation. That's basically yeah. what, what the apology boils down to. So right. then. And- the question here, yeah. though, is like, okay, how can somebody consent to you when you literally control their paycheck? Right. That's not consent. That's using what you have to compel somebody to say yes to you because they know that they have a lot to lose if they tell you no. And that's why, you know, I mean, that's why larger companies have HR. That's why larger companies have ethics rules and bans on colleagues dating each other. And, you know, lots of people find love at work. I mean, that's just... You know, you, 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 you make in relationships where you see people. Well, that was and, a famous thing with Michelle and Barack Obama, right? Like he yeah. started feeling something. He's like, okay, I'm quitting my job. You know, I want to date this person. I want to quit. My, I'm going to quit my job because this is not a boundary. I want to, I, I want to break. If, if you really feel that way about somebody, then yeah. that's what you got to do. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes it doesn't work out. You know, uh, when I was in a, when I was in college, my RA like fell deeply in love with someone who lived in the house and so quit as RA so they could date and it was over in like a month so like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's the forbidden romance right. aspect you know um <laughs> right but um you know it's um it's I just like how do you not know that and I, I'm not saying that there aren't situations where people with power differentials really do fall in love with each other because life is weird right but you should not be actively pursuing your employees. It's also, it's, it's the same thing as men shouldn't be hitting on women while they're working a retail job because that woman is currently being paid and she's on the clock to be nice to you. And if she wanted to talk to you outside of the coffee shop or she wants to talk to you outside of the GameStop or if she wants to talk to you outside of the Macy's or wherever the heck you met her, then she would. Like, you know, I mean, I feel like we really presume in social situations on people who are currently on the clock to be nice to us and be respectful to us. And that is not an invitation to push for more. And I think that, you know, in an industry as small as gaming, people find it very easy to blur lines, Mm -hmm. but that's not what's happening here. This guy trapped this woman. And, you know, when you say, well, it would be so easy to leave. I mean, I think that, especially if you want to stay in an industry, it's really not that easy. You know, I, you know, I didn't have any, abuse of this nature, right? But like, I put up with bad behavior from my advisor in graduate school, because I knew that at the time I wanted to be an academic and I needed to suck it up and make it work with him in order to get what I wanted later. Mm. You know, there were times when he was really nasty to me and like, didn't appreciate my work and neglected me and made me feel really bad. And you know what I did? I told myself to suck it up and not let this guy get me down and push through because I was strong enough to win in the end and make it. And I think that that is something a lot of women tell themselves, even when a lot worse is happening to them than just the bad attitude that happened to me. And, you know, especially if you're in gaming, like how many people talk about, I'm so grateful to have this job. This is the most exciting industry in the whole world. Even if you're making bad money, why would you go make bad money in something you didn't feel pride in if you thought that you could just tough it out a little longer? And even if you're going from any job to any job, who do you have to ask for a reference when you try to leave? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just more complicated, I think, than people make it sound. It's not easy to just quit your job. Like how many people have told teachers just quit this year? Why would I do that? I would be losing my entire livelihood. I would be losing great health insurance. I like most aspects of my job. I love my students. I really am scared about COVID and I'm not happy with the way that parents talked about teachers in the last year. Mm-hmm. But is that enough to quit? 
Right. You know what I mean? And I, I think that like, well, if you don't like it, then quit. If something's wrong, then quit. And, you know, that's, that's a really easy thing to say. It's not an easy thing to do. And until you know how it felt to be that other person, there's really not a lot that you can, you can say, I think. If there's a, the, the experience gap, yeah. right? And I think there are so many of, and I, there are my comments, you know, I've been doing shell stories and I've gotten like real attention for the good trouble stuff basically all year. And I've been, I try to be active in the comments and there's so many people that it's basically a version of, I don't see a problem or I don't experience problem. Therefore there's not a problem. Like how bad a problem could it be if I don't experience it or if my wife doesn't experience it or if my, you know, this other person doesn't experience it. It's like, okay, I showed this image to my wife and she had no problem with it. So nobody should have a problem or like, you know, uh, I, or like I'm hearing about this and this is terrible, but like this was the, there's this other person that I know that you know was able to overcome. So you should be able to overcome. And it's like the not, the universalization of our experiences and the individualization of our experiences. You know, it's me, and therefore you know every other interaction is like another little me all yeah. over the place. And like we need to broaden ourselves. We need to kind of get out of our heads and get out of our experience. And if yeah. somebody's saying something and they're saying something over and over and over and over, like, you know, like, how can I be criticized for saying something over and over and over again? And yet, you know, it's like on the other side, it's like, well, there's not a problem. It's like, well, if I'm talking over and over again, there's clearly a problem. Right. You know, so and if, if Liz is talking over and over again, obviously she's kept this private for this yeah. for these reasons, but you know, get to know her for five seconds. <laughs> and you'll know. <laughs> yeah. And like, I also feel like I am the sort of person that if I wanted to generalize my own experience, I could probably come up with a case to tell you things aren't that bad. My experience of board gaming has been very positive. The people that I'm friends with in board gaming are great. Um, I have not had to call the police about somebody who was harassing me. I've had one troll who also trolls men. Like, you know, I have been very fortunate so far. Knock on wood. If you're thinking about it, leave me alone. But like... <laughs> But, you know, um, I have been very, very lucky. My experience of war gaming has been very positive. My reception has been warm. I've had zero problem finding great people to talk to uh, and play with. And, you know. The, fu the funny thing, it's so funny about war games. Like you come in as a PhD, you know, yeah. like you come in with bringing the heavy guns. So like, you know, and that's, that becomes a thing where it's like, you know, women are held to this standard of like, you know, she needs to bring something or else, you know, it's just a woman or it's just somebody's girlfriend or whatever it is. Yeah. So like you, nobody can mess with you when it comes to like a war game. You're going this, 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 and you're speaking like, you know, you're pronouncing the Latin properly on all the maps and all that kind of thing. And, you know, you're, you're bringing the, the, the heat. So I, I can imagine you have that kind of armor, right? Just coming towards you. Imagine if you're a woman who just happens to think this is interesting. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, okay, this looks interesting. This looks like an intellectual challenge. They're, you know, very brainy person in life. They don't get the history. They don't understand the context of it, but like they're, right. they're, they could be, they could be if they were warmly welcomed. And there was a, a, a medium post, again, another medium post of a woman who described her experiences, tried to, you know, getting break into war games. And yeah. it was awful. Like, like yeah. you know, the, 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 pa the patronizing and all sort of stuff. So it's like, okay, there's Liz and who has her experience and there's the other woman who has her experience. And then yeah. we could keep on going. And extrapolating from, you know, what we hear from a lot of other people, I could, I could imagine that both experiences are fairly common. So it's like, what are we going to do? Are we going to say, well, uh, you know, Liz shows how it's done, just like, you know, know your stuff. Or are we, you know, like, we can just kind of ride that to the sunset. And that's, that makes people feel comfortable. At the right. end of the day, it's about men's comfort. But, you know, this other thing makes us uncomfortable. So we have all these real, these rationalizations to be like, oh, it's okay. It's just, what do they say? How do they word their thing? How, you know, yeah. the, what, you know, all that kind of thing. And, and getting back to the, I know we're kind of bouncing back and forth, but it's no, all like kind of one big cake yeah. for us, right? So follow us people. Um, the Chud Bang <laughs> Legends thing. Um, so the poster, his name was Robin. She is a member of the One Stop Co-op Shop Discord. And so when she saw the Chud Bang Legends thing, cause she's a backer. So she saw that the update with the rule book coming in. And the first thing she saw was that the, the pixie with a pose. And what, what leapt out to her was, like I see her vagina, full frontal nudity. And that's what she posted. And mm -hmm. so many men just took that as, you know, I was expecting Debbie does Dallas. So like, that isn't that bad. So she's, she's causing trouble. She's catastrophizing. She's being antagonistic. She's doing, and like putting it on her. Yeah. 
putting it on be so okay maybe liz davidson would have rewarded that differently liz davidson with her um you know whatever is her, her phds and her you know double doctorates and whatever you got you got a lot going on uh you know you would have worded it differently and that would have been a different conversation but like we can't ask for that we no. you know this person didn't just come in and say cancel the project you know they had a on her own experience she shared it and there was nothing inherently um combative about it it was just no. this is what i saw this is not i was really surprised and that and people just went like it's not a vagina it's not a vagina one person went to went actually put like a highlighter pen uh in pink to show like oh this is looks like a little thong over here so she's clearly covered what are you doing if you have to look that hard to find the thong really <laughs> I can't. like Oh, and it just, you know, in terms of like our gut instinctual reactions as men, again, I'm, I'm, yeah. my, my, my focus is our gut instinctual reactions. So like, you know, Liz, there's a lot that Liz brings, you know, the short hair and the, 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 the intellect and the intellect. And like, you know, we can't ask them all to be Liz. A, no. B, and you know, even someone like Liz, she's here telling us about her pain and her struggle and her association to her context. You know, yeah. even if someone like Liz is encountering problems, imagine <laughs> if it's, you know, someone who is, you know, a, 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 you know, just different people bringing their own context. Yeah, well, I think you actually bring up a really important point, right, which is that I have a different set of identifiers, right, that make right. my experience different. And I don't think that my PhD is necessarily something, I don't lead with it. You know what I mean? If you listen to enough episodes with me, you'll know, but I don't lead with it. What it is, is that... I have a confidence that comes with it that probably makes me ignore a lot, push through a lot, because I think back on my experience with my game group, right? Like I like, I like them. It took me like a month to fully settle into the game group that I play with here um, because they like to say, you know, mean jokes and call it humor. And we definitely differ politically on a lot of things. And you know, I can see that group as being very unwelcoming to somebody who was more worried about whether they would fit in. Because the other thing is that what I carry with me is the knowledge that at least within some corners of the gaming community, some people respect what I have to say. I'm not going to say that's universal, but, you know, I had already kind of made my way as a solo gamer. I knew that I knew what I was doing. I wasn't dependent on anyone to give me that. And that actually probably is also born of the trauma of my graduate degree, right? Like I had mm. my, uh, my advisor ignored me for a while. Like we had a spat, I, I call it a spat, but it was actually much more horrible than that. I used to come home crying from meetings every week uh, with this guy. Um, and we would um, basically talk about what I wanted my work to be about and he would just trash it. And so I finally tried to get a different advisor, was told no. But I pushed on anyway. I did what I needed to do. I wrote my proposal. It passed. He didn't even shake my hand after that. I wrote, it took a year for him to engage my work seriously after that. I'd already written two chapters. He read the first one, realized that maybe I did know what I was doing and did a complete 180. But one, not everybody is that lucky. And two, that meant that I had to decide that I was going to give myself the seal of approval and just do it. And that is not something that you can reasonably expect of other people. That doesn't make me special. That doesn't make me stronger, better than anybody. That's just like, I had a dad who's a feminist who raised me to be what I was gonna be. You know, I cried to my parents about this. I cried to my boyfriend about this. Like I had a support network that was giving me the feedback I needed when I wasn't getting it from another place where I did need it. And like, you know, everybody has things that get them through crap situations, right? And some people are just luckier on that front than others and we can't account for that but you know so like you know what is some gamer bro gonna say to me that's gonna make me feel bad at this point like true after i like i went through an actual traumatic experience in terms of deciding my own self-worth and the worth of what i had to say and the worth of what i was able to do and you know i also had a an, a male graduate student who came in the year after me who was being promoted over me at that time and you know you know he and i talked about it he's like my brother i love him and I actually got closure on the situation because believe it or not, when I went, when I left to teach high school, I got brought back because more and more academics are doing that. Um, so the thing that I had done that was a scandal, which was leave grad school to go do Teach for America. It was, it was a bit explosive at the time because most people at least try on the job market stuff. And I was like, you know what, now nah, I'm out of here. Um, 
And, you know, I was eventually brought back to talk about it. So I got to meet with my advisor and it was really, we had this weird moment. He's a strange man. Um, he, <laughs> you know, we were just kind of doing small talk and he goes, you know, I've been thinking about it and um, I've come to the, the, the conclusion that you're the best student I ever had. And I said, well, I never would have thought that. And then we both like cried, but like didn't talk about it. And then we just kept going. Like I got closure, but it's the best closure you can get. And I think that he knew that he had done something wrong when I, when I announced that I was leaving academia, because he said, well, did anybody in particular cause this? And I looked at him and I said, no, because what are you supposed to do in that situation? Which takes us right back to the broken token and why that girl could not quit her job. That woman could not quit her job because I was unable to look my advisor in the face in the moment and say, yeah, you did me dirty, man, because he had enough power over me still at that time. I wanted my degree. I wanted acknowledgement of the work that I had done. So I sucked it up. I told him everything was fine and I kept going. And like, it took years to unpack all that. And I think, you know, and that was with a very not sexual relationship at all. Like, you know what I mean? And there, there was no romance there. He's an old man. And like, no. <laughs> and, but like, you know, it's just, you know, it really just goes to show you, right? It doesn't require anything more than a power imbalance to create something that's that messy. Bringing gender into it makes it worse. I think sometimes that he would have liked me better if I had been a man. And I think that having gone through that, I have a lot of sympathy for women who are in way more vulnerable situations than I ever was. You'd never know if you no. look at Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, her Dice Tower reviews, her own channel reviews, her going to be on heavy cardboard, going to be on all over the place. You'd never know. And, no. you know, and to universalize, well, you know, someone like Liz has never a problem. So why does this person have a problem? Everybody has a context. Oh, yeah. Everybody. And assume every woman, every POC, every LGBTQ person, when they have a problem and the, try not to instinctually say, well, they're catastrophizing, they're making it worse. They must see a mountain that you're not seeing. And oh, yeah. even in a case of Liz, who I'd never known this, and I could, I no. could kind of guess it from, you know, I was, I went down the PhD track and I had my own experiences as a POC trying to get a PhD, uh, you know, assuming that I would want to hang out with Manny and Enrique, as opposed to like every other person who was in the program, like the, all these little things that I can, can I, I can kind of share and talk about, you know, um, but, you know, hearing it. And we need to, yeah. we need to hear, like, not just assume, but hear it in order yeah. to really learn. And the people concept. around me kept saying things like, well, you just need to build street cred with him. Mm. Or y'all just have a personality difference. It's not sexism. Mm. And actually, nobody acknowledged there was a real problem until we had been on an archaeological dig together. We were all living in the same house and people were around enough to see it. And even then, the best I got was, well, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to tough it out. And so I did, but is that really a fair expectation? I mean, do I regret my life path or the choices that I made? No, I really don't. I'm not really a person who bothers regretting things, to be honest. <laughs> but like, you know, and I also feel like those things made me someone who can just walk into a setting and not worry about it too much because I've been through the trauma already. Like, what, what are you going to do at this point? But like, <laughs> that doesn't mean that that was okay. And it also doesn't mean that that's something that other women should have to go through in order to be comfortable because hazing is wrong. And, you know, if, if I can have that happen and then have my advisor tell me that I was the best student he ever had, well, why didn't he treat me like that at the time? I'm going to say because sexism, honestly, it's not trying to toughen you up. It's not tough love. It's, you know, it's time passes and people realize that they messed up, but in the moment you are coded culturally to respond in certain ways to certain people. And if you don't examine it, you hurt them. And this isn't, I'm making it about gender. Mm -mm. You know, you're putting it in there. You're, you're, you're assuming maybe he does that to all sorts of people. No, well. actually I've talked to other female students. The last one that he had seen to completion in a PhD had been more than 10 years before me. Others had quit. <clears throat> It was a known thing. Actually, somebody tried to talk to me about it before I went to school. So there was a whisper network, but you know, I wanted to work on a specific subject. I wanted to go to the best school I could go to. He and I had had really good initial meetings. And actually most of our relationship had amazing moments. Like he's somebody that I love and have problems with. 
because we have like a really effed up intellectual parent-child relationship like you know I can't even say that our relationship was 100% bad because that's the thing right when somebody's doing something wrong to you that doesn't mean that the relationship is 100% objectively bad the whole time and I think that that's something that we like to ignore I bet the people went to the broken token booth and saw them being friendly and thought nothing was wrong I bet that people were like, well, he gave you a career boost and gave you a glowing recommendation, talked about how great you are. How can there be a problem between you? Mm -hmm. Because we don't see the full context of a relationship. It's also why when people say they don't want to talk to their parents anymore, I would never say, but family, because we don't know. People love their parents and get and have horrible experiences. Um, You know, I sort of see my relationship with my advisor as a parent relationship, which I think is why I go there, right? But I feel like, you know, he was like, you know, they call your advisor, your doctor father, you know, your father, which is interesting because we now have Dr. Mutters as well. But, <laughs> but um, you know, it's very much like that's the person who forms you. And so you end up with all their weirdnesses in you, just like a parent. And people tell you you should respect them. And then, oh, but they said such nice things about you at that conference. But that doesn't mean that behind closed doors, you aren't getting your, getting your butt kicked emotionally. Like, And there's nothing about that that's honorable or like, oh, you're so tough. So think about how it would feel if that was, if that had a sexual component too. And somebody's wanting things from you that you didn't want to give and also disrespecting you because you gave them because that's what happens to women still. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, but like, okay, we live in a world of OnlyFans and where we should, you know, where we, we are more sex positive than we've ever been as a society And, you know, I actually think it's perfectly fine to, you know, do sex work or enjoy your sexuality in a really public way or, you know, choose to dress in ways that are like, but like, if that's what makes you feel good about yourself and you feel empowered by doing that, I say, go for it. That's not what makes me feel empowered because of the environments I came through. Mm. But like, at the same time, look at what just happened in Texas. We do not have normal understandings of sex in this country. (laughs) And so, you know, acting like it's neutral or like, oh, if you were only grown up, you would respond this way to a certain thing. Like, give me a break. You know that that's not true because you can look out your window and see something totally different. If that was your daughter, you know, like I hate saying, well, if that was your daughter, if that was your sister, if that was your mother, because like it shouldn't have to come to that. It should have to be that way, right. But I mean, really, seriously, like, what if that, what if that pixie drawing was based on, like, your innocent daughter, and you're the kind of dad who jokes about shotguns, but also likes to see fairy tits in his rule books, that's out there, you know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you just can't, there's no one easy way to look at this, because we are so messed up. Yeah, I mean, I I try to be constructive, like, what's the takeaway, right, this is a long ranging discussion of hitting a lot of things, some takeaways, uh, a, a personal experience, you know, this is, it doesn't, uh, thank you, Liz, for trusting me. You know, I never take that for granted. I know we've been friends for years, but I never take that for granted when people are trust, you know, me to share a story. And, you know, the aim should be men uh, to be that trusted person that a woman or somebody else who's a marginalized person can trust you with their experience. You know, there's nothing special about me. I just try hard and as you want it. <laughs> a lot of other people can get to that. You know, I want yeah. to, I want to really help that. Um, you know, hearing a personal experience, understanding that there are always two rules, at least two rules yeah. when it comes to this stuff. You know, the, you know, a male chest is not the same thing as a female chest. A, a, a woman PhD student is not the same thing as a, as a male PhD student. There's so many things in which there's this, this just two rules. And get to know those rules as opposed to saying, you know, or just denying it and steamrolling it and saying, okay, well, there's only one rule, you know, or, or whatever. Uh, and you need to whatever, whatever. Okay, so that, that is that. And also just context, right? Everybody has, everybody brings a context. And like, if some, if someone seems to be kind of making a mountain out of molehill, well, maybe for them, it really is a mountain and you're just not seeing it, you know? And it's just something, and you filter it out because you can't, (laughs) because you you live in a a position of, you know, you know, I I use that over word, I'll use P word privilege, uh, but you live in a position where, you know, you don't have to deal with this stuff on an everyday basis. You can check out of it. You know, you can tune into Shelf Stories or tune into Beyond Salter or tune into, you know, um, Our Family Plays Games. You could tune in these other places uh, and, and hear about it. And then you could just like, up, oh, turn it off and then move on without thinking about your day. That's not a reality for yeah. Liz. And it's not a reality for us. They, they, we wade through a mountain every single day of something, oh, yeah. something. <laughs> so like just, you know, and I know this is a, um, and maybe it's a little re- re- bit repetitive, but learning is repetitive. So it's like, okay, just get that in your head, people. If you are a person who is on the other side if you're a person who defended greg 
on the Gorokin token, if you're a person that, you know, kind of came in with one of those, like, well, innocent until proven guilty, you know, what happened to that? Which mob, uh, you know, uh, uh, break out the pitchforks? Like, people just went to that immediately. Like, you know, she posts something, and it's like, yeah. well, she must be witch mob. She must be a, a psycho ex. Speaking of, you know, that whole trope, you know? Um, and meanwhile, we have guys posting revenge porn of that person. We don't call him a psycho ex. Yeah. You know, Although, like that's, he's a psycho ex. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what psycho ex is. <laughs> Are you kidding Ooh. me? But yeah, we reserve, you know, think about it. What's the first image that comes to your mind when I hear the phrase psycho ex? It's a woman. Right. And like even women play into that. Like if you listen to country radio, it's like, car my name too is Leather Seat. You know, like you have all this, like, you know, it's, I love that thing. song. <laughs> Although there's also that creepy song about the guy who like shines his headlights into his girl's window at night, oh, which geez. is like, oh God, you need to go to jail. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> they all do. All these away. people should just go right. to jail for crazy asses. Right. Like. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, the like educating ourselves and seeing like, okay, there's these, the, these behaviors exist, people. And then we live them every day, even if you don't live them. God bless you if you don't live them. Uh, that's the that's the perfect world is if nobody lives them, but we're not living in that. Yeah. There are two rules. There are two, whatever. And two you know, because you live in the one world and, you know, when you see, uh, you know, Ash Taylor post and when you see Liz Davidson share her story, when you see all these people share their stories, you know, the, the first instinct can't be something like, well, innocent to proven guilty. They're trying to, you know, tear him down. They're trying to do this, this, and this. It turns out it was exactly what the woman said. What a surprise. It was exactly what is, you know, and it's like, you know, it's not about like, well, well no, he needs to, you know, uh, lose his job and lose everything right now. It's about like, okay, you know, we hear something and it's like, all right, male, I believe her. Now, yeah. what, what do you have to say? This better be good. You know, it's not about re remove his job without ever, you know, hearing him say anything. It's not a witch mob. It's not, I hate that word mob. I really yeah. do. Or a witch hunt or whatever it is. It's not that. It, and that, that instinctual defensiveness to just defend the status quo. Ugh. Yeah. We can do better, men. Men, I, I, again, I speak to men, and then, you know, but well, obviously, I get right women, you know, I've got women sitting right here. Uh, yeah. I'm in trying to invite men to be better. We, they, they, it's an open invitation to just to learn and be better. Yeah. By the way, I would, I would like to clarify. I only tell this story now. So my advisor is still alive. He's retired. He has dementia. He's old. I will probably never see him again or talk to him again in this life. Um, and I got the closure that I needed. Like, this is not an invitation to ever look me up and go talk to anybody that I used to know because it's done. I think it's important to tell the story because people need to know, and I'm not in academia anymore, so who am I going to, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm mostly happy with the experience I had despite the trauma because I became the person that I wanted to make myself into. So I have made what I need to make from my own experiences. And I don't consider it anybody else's business. And I think that's also why it's hard to come forward because like, you know, coming forward about what happened to you is not an invitation for other people to go stick their noses in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's also a really important thing that, you know, people are like, well, why didn't she speak up? Well, why? Because now everybody thinks it's their business. And like, I think that's actually at least ideas of consent in general, right? Like we think a lot of things are our business and aren't our business. Like, well, did the teacher cheat on her husband? It's not your business. Uh, like, you know, did they have a relationship? Not your business. Uh, you know what I mean? Like none of those things are your business. People gave you what they were willing to give you and that should be enough. And I, I feel like a lot of what we struggle with now is like feeling like what somebody offered us of their own free will wasn't enough and we have a right to more from them, more explanations and more information that maybe they don't want to give because guess what like that's their personal life something that stressed them out like why should they have to be more for you because you're a person on the internet who wants it and you know i, I actually feel like that's important to say because people just love to blow things up you know <laughs> and like i'm not interested in a further blow up for me this is like i came out stronger i resolved my relationships the way that i need to resolve them and i'm done so now I can talk about it for the benefit of other people, but other people are not at that place yet and they don't have to be, and you don't get to tell them what place they should be at. So we're talking about helping men do better, right? I think what I want and like what I, I can't speak for all women. I think that's always the problem, right? Just like you can't speak for all men. Um, but what I want is to be treated as a person. Like I've definitely walked into a game store and felt appraised by someone as a potential date, like within the first meeting 
dude, I didn't come there to date nobody. Like I came to play a game. <laughs> and I think that women in particular feel that a lot from men when you're at a game night or a convention, even if you're lonely, even if you really want a partner, that person is a person first. You should not be assessing every person that you might be attracted to for their suitability as a date and have that be what your thought is the moment somebody walks in. Because by doing that, you are not thinking about them as a person, as a potential friend, as you know, somebody that you can have a respectful relationship with, you've already slotted them into, oh, are we going to hook up or not? And that is the worst thing I think that you can do to women and then act like you ever wanted to be friends. That's what I would say. I, I admit it. I've done it. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I try over years. It's taken years of, of thinking and training to enter into spaces, you know, kiki spaces and not like look for a per helps that I'm already married. Uh, but this is stop people does not that does not stop men for doing it. Um, you know, but especially when I was younger and, you know, it came from, and I've done a podcast about this. It came from a place of loneliness. It came from a place of like kind of being the beta and not, you know, you know, this, these people will get the girls or like, even like other geeks will get other geeky girls. And I'm like, Oh, what's the secret. I'm going to, uh, you know, you get that Neanderthal. Like I want to just club the guy over the head and yeah. you know grab the girl and drive him away. Like I have experienced it. I have made women uncomfortable, you know, with like, you know, vibe, you know, yeah. just, just vibe. And yeah. with like comments and with, you know, just, you know, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I used to DM. So like, I'll pack up the thing. It's like, oh, you know, a uh, woman stick around and we'll talk, you know, we'll, I'll walk you to the train station or whatever it is. And the, you know, I, I, I try my best, you know, to not like, you know, have an action, but the vibe right. was there, you yeah. know, and just to speaking to that, like, I mean, I, and so, you know, just kind of like breaking down my own experience like this isn't just like you know jason on high you know i've, I've kind of discovered the secret of, of positive nailhood like this is from from you know earned over years of mistakes and earned over years of self-reflection and owning my loneliness and owning my urges and desires and whatever it is and and owning the fact that i have made women uncomfortable with my you know uh whatever i'm whatever i'm putting out there in the world and you know i don't want to just like sit in my emotions about it i don't want to be like you know self-flagellate it's not about that at all I, I you know siempre palante we say in spanish always just forward right and so it's like okay i own it it's it's done i've made changes just cut out the alcohol because i knew the alcohol was a problem uh you know did other things just like you know what no, we're not, we're not about that anymore. We're about kindness. We're about, you know, uh, we're about making better gaming. We're, and I, could, I, I have better gaming experiences now because of it, because I have richer gaming experiences. I have, you know, gaming with women and their perspectives and the, some of the jokes they're making. And, you know, Liz will rip you, <laughs> rip you apart with some, uh, you know, jokes from all over the place that a man would, when it came out of a man's mouth, it would be like, oh, <laughs> but, you know, it's like it all perspective matters. And, you know, just like different where they come from, it matters. And my gaming life is richer because of it. So it's like, okay, was that hard? sure but i am now a better gamer a better person a better gamer and i enjoy better gaming experiences because of it so yeah. that's what this is about you know it's not oh, about yeah. tearing down it's not about guilt i own it like what what liz said just hit me in the gut because i that was me and now it's diff now i try to make it different i, I won't say i like i do it you know, I'll never, you know, because there might be a woman out there, even in the future, if I go to a con, they're like, okay, oh, Jason gave me a, I got a little vibe from Jason. And it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it, <laughs> I'm not going to say that I'm perfect now. I guess like just, I, I, again, like I, yeah. I appreciate having people like Liz around to call men on their crap and just, you know, invite us to be better because we have a lot to offer. We really do. We have a lot of positive things to offer. That's not about tearing down. So yeah. just, if we can just get a hold of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, and this so, hopefully conversation like this help that help that out. But yes, woman tip one: women know they have vibe senses, just like men. We know, we know. But two, yeah, I, I actually think it's really great that you um that you bring that up because the other thing is like I also have the kind of anxiety where I wake up thinking about something mean I said when I was like eight, and like feeling guilty about it. Like everybody messes up. Everybody has made somebody uncomfortable on some level at some point in their life, and it doesn't mean that you're bad. And it doesn't mean that you're irredeemable. And it doesn't mean that you should be so ashamed that you can never show your face in public again. Um, I think that this is all, these conversations are not meant to make people go away or make people feel horrible or make people hate themselves or brand people as bad people. Um, this is about just kind of learning how to enjoy your life more by being a better friend and being part of a better community and getting to know people that you might've missed out on 
on another life because you were too busy wondering if they were dateable to wonder whether they were cool. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> it's, it's good trouble. That's why I call it good trouble. It's trouble, <laughs> but it's good trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having this conversation. I hope this is helpful to, yeah. um, to somebody out there, you know? Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> you know, that, thank you. Thank you, Liz, for, you know, this, this again, I don't take for granted that, you know, to, to create tr- fears of trust, I don't take that for granted. And, you know, thank you very much for sharing. And, and I think that people are going to get something out of it. So, yeah, I mean, we've been friends for years. I appreciate that you always come on and have the hard combos with me. And, uh, you know, these these very sensitive private issues that we're about to put online for the planet. So and now we can go on. goof off and play something stupid. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> All right, close uh, us out, Liz. Happy gaming, everybody. Uh, if you can change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, later, everybody. <laughs>